Hello there, thank you for joining me again today. Um, this is a video regarding the Marconi Instruments Signal Generator 2022 model. Uh, boasts a frequency range of 10 kHz to a gigahertz. Um, this particular instrument is um, roughly about 30 years old now, I would have thought, uh, if not just a little bit older. Uh, manufactured around the late 1980s to I think the last that came off a production line of these was about 2001, something like that. They had quite a good production run and there were lots of these uh, sold worldwide. Um, this signal generator is very much like the Marconi 2955. It shares the, um, the same, um, well most of the same working innards anyway as the 2955A radio test sets do as far as the componentry is concerned. Um, the only thing that I'm uh, observant of with some of these smaller Marconi instruments like the RF millivolt meters, the frequency counters and, and indeed this is that the display isn't backlit and although we can see the display quite clearly in this video um, when you've got it in the workshop in high light conditions as natural light or backlit um, you do get quite a bit of glare off the display in certain positions and it can be quite difficult as well to see the display in certain lighting conditions and that's my only regret with the some of the Marconi instruments is they weren't backlit the displays um, but anyway I mean in this context we can see it quite clearly but these days most test instruments even some of the older ones are backlit displays so I dare say you can introduce a backlight to these but um, Again, it's, it's just something that Marconi didn't bother with, really. Um, but the, the, the signal generator um, goes from 10 kilohertz to 1,000 megahertz, 1 gigahertz. It's a nice little uh, small um, package. You know, it's quite nice to fit on the bench. On the rear, we've got, uh, obviously, voltage selection and... Uh, for different countries power supplies and we have a frequency standard input on the top right we can also calibrate it as well uh, using this adjustment pot there to adjust it and um, we can select different voltages and the fuses at the back and if it's fitted with other options um, such as you know mod in and uh, an out and RF out through the back like if it's rack mounted then you know they're fitted there on the rear and there's a fan there and uh, that's about it really on the rear of the unit it's got a nice uh, protector things on the back so that you can stand it up on its back without damaging anything um, weighs about probably five six kilograms maybe a bit more but it's well made you know I mean it's not going anywhere it's a tough old uh, tough little unit. Uh, this carry handle as well bends up and into all different positions so you can bench mount it and that's why it's got the you know the feet underneath as well. It's it's a good little unit, it really is. Recommend these if anybody wants to buy a signal generator that's uh, small. Um, I think this is one of the smallest I've seen really uh, for this age. Normally the Marconi SIG gens are quite big you know they're as big as some of the HP Agilent SIG gens that are, take most of the bench up in size and you know and incredibly heavy to move about. This is a nice little portable type uh, SIG gen that doesn't take up too much room on your bench and it's uh, it's just a nice size to shove in a little corner somewhere or or have on your um, you know your your uh, shelf without it pulling the shelf down with the weight because some of these SIG gens you know you put brackets up on a wall with a shelf. You don't need many SIG gens and radio test instruments on that shelf for it to become too heavy for the supporting brackets and it can cause a shelf to collapse and I've seen that happen and um, you know this is why some of these smaller instruments being a lot uh, lighter in weight are, are better to put on shelving. Um, at least you're not worrying about the shelf collapsing. Um, but yes the um, They've obviously thought about having the supply switch on the front. They've got an external modding out socket there for different modulation standards above and beyond FM, phase mod and AM, which is what this um, signal generator does. 
Um, so we've got, for example, on the front here, uh, we've got um, recall and store, so you can use the internal memories as well. So I could recall, for example, a uh, a setting from memory, and I could even store as well if I wish to. Um, you can set up the carrier frequency quite easily as well. Um, so, for example, I could go for 400 megahertz, and uh, we've got the the frequency there. It goes in. Uh, you can select the increment as well as to how many kilohertz or megahertz steps the frequency up and down um, can give you an increment and you can set that with the increment key um, in addition to that we've got FM so we can set up FM mod so I'll put in 1.5 um, kilohertz deviation FM uh, AM you can then, so for example, put 60% AM on uh, if you want to do an AM signal. Uh, you can change the RF level as well using the up and down buttons. You can put in a level if you wish um, because the RF level is displayed here. You can put in 0 dBm for example uh, or you can type in a, a level like minus 120 uh, dBm. Um, and you can have that converted into microvolts, millivolts uh, and volts as well depending on what level you obviously set so I think 0 dBm it might tell you what that is in millivolts obviously you know when you get higher levels and it'll go up into the volts range as well millivolts, microvolts, dBm um, so you can adjust all that and you can also adjust the uh, the signal level using the uh, up and down arrows as well and um, you can you can do quite a bit with it um, just go back to the FM side I think you can up and down the FM mod as well using the up and down by setting up the increments uh, we've also got things like for example carrier on and off so we can switch the carrier on and off uh, mod on and off as well and uh, we've also got things like um, total um, written, whatever that means. So there's quite a few functions on it. There's even more functions with the second function key there, where you can press to get second functions. Um, so there's more to it as well that you can you can set up, which is in the manual. Uh, for the test set. Um, again an N type 50 ohm output you can give uh, reverse power of 25 watts uh, if you were to accidentally transmit back into the instrument um, and then of course we've got the power supply switch here as well so looking at it on a spectrum analyzer um, if I were to put in say 200 megahertz frequency in, and then uh, I were to connect up the spectrum analyzer to it. It's um, quite spectrally pure. Um, but as well as that, it's quite a neat RF output on it as well. It's uh, quite responsive. The moment you select a frequency or um, a level, it's straight there. It's not. There's no sort of delay with it. Sometimes there's a bit of a, a delay on some instruments when you select a level. Or a frequency, um, you know, it's you know what resolution you've got it set to. Um, it doesn't sort of round up or round down on some instruments unless you're entering the exact value. This will round up or round down to the nearest value, even if you've not got the if you've entered a value in that's not quite within the increment steps that you've set up. Um, it will then round up or round down to the nearest dB um, in level or the nearest kilohertz in frequency. So it won't give you an error like some instruments do. The Rode and Swartz instruments, um, some of those that I have, if you don't enter the frequency in exactly in the format that it needs as per the increment setup on the frequency or level, it says error for error and it throws you out and it can be quite annoying. Uh, this sort of doesn't do that, you know, it's quite, uh, it's quite a nice little unit. Um, so we've got the spectrum analyzer um, set up.
and uh, we can see there at 200 megahertz it's uh, it's quite nice is the uh, is the signal quite nice looking quite uh, spectrally pure across its frequency range and uh, of course I can adjust the RF gen level as well um, you know, up and down and in between the RF attenuator um, clicks it's not dropping the carry losing it um, you do find that with some um, radio test sets not necessarily Marconi ones but other manufacturers <clears throat> depending on how well the RF attenuator section is made with the relays <coughs> excuse me depends on uh, you know if that signal there totally drops sometimes on uh, on some test instruments um, so you know it suddenly as you're going down the level for example um, then it might do that in between the clicks sort of like that and then starts going down and and then it does that and jumps back up in between the clicks and like that um, you will see that on some other test instruments as well and that's testament really in this case uh, because that doesn't do that you know whether it's going up or whether it's going down in RF level it, it keeps that nice constant steady level as it's going up and down and it's not uh, dragging its heels so again another good indication of the kind of manufacturing um, quality that Marconi had um, when they were manufacturing these these instruments and um, yeah so a little overview of, uh, of, um, of this signal generator quite a nice little unit um, if you ever get a chance to get one of these um, I fully recommend it um, very nice very popular as well there's quite a lot of these uh, I've seen sold on eBay and they go very quick you know there's uh, quite a, a following for these um, so yes that's a little rundown of the Marconi 2022 signal generator thank you for watching and um, if you like the video please subscribe and um, obviously post comments in the, the video as well and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Bye-bye.